and good evening, everybody. Welcome to this edition here of Showbiz of the Steelers uh, pregame show as they'll be taken out of the Cleveland Browns uh, going into tonight's uh, contest. They air uh, Monday Night Football. It seems like uh, every time they play under the light, something magical seems uh, expected to happen. The Steelers right now are currently tied with the San Francisco 49ers at 52 wins apiece right now, looking to move past that tonight. Uh, for, for the most part. And uh, for tonight's game, going into this uh, contest, you look at two, uh, their streak, uh, their winning streak seems to be a record so far as they've won 20 in a row since 1992 when Bill Cowher was their rookie coach. October 19th, uh, 1992, when they defeated the Cincinnati Bengals, they would defeat them 20 to zip, a shutout in that game. And right now the Steelers are definitely going to be having their work uh, cut out for them as they will be looking to keep going right now, trying to get 53 wins to uh, break the tie with the 49ers. But anyway, uh, we look at this team right now as constructed. There's been a lot of questions so far. Once again, it seems to continue with Matt Canada. The biggest question right now going to tonight's game, can Matt Canada, as the offense coordinator, make simpler plays to open up this offense? And that has definitely been a real big concern because you saw last week and uh, Kate Pickett's opening week versus the San Francisco 49ers at the end of the day under center. He went 31-46 for 232 yards, getting sacked five times for 34 yards, netted out at the end of the day for 198 yards due to those five sacks for a loss of 34 yards in that contest. And for the most part, he already has uh, two interceptions for the year with one touchdown. So he's already been turnover prone to start off the gate. But one of the biggest things, too, in that game, the Steelers, uh, the 49ers defense was able to force four turnovers in that game, which led to six points off those turnovers right there, both uh, being field goals in that game. And for the most part, the Steelers right now, when you look at uh, right now, as far as like points off uh, turnovers right now in that game, they only have one to show for it was zero points. Right now, you got the Cowboys right now in the top spot, having uh, through two games, 33 points off 11 turnovers, in, which I'm also including uh, going out uh, four and out. So here we go uh, for tonight's game. Uh, it's definitely going to be a lot of interesting stuff right now. Uh, Steelers versus Browns right now. The Browns are definitely going to be wearing uh, a throwback uh, jersey tonight uh, for tonight's uh, game as we uh, look at it. Uh, for tonight's uh, jerseys for under the light as they'll be uh, right now for uh, tonight's game. They're going to be wearing their white alternate throwback uniforms. They'll wear a white alternate helmet with the same white throwback jerseys the team wore in 2021. This is pay homage to their late 40s and early 50 Browns from what I heard. But that uh, should definitely look a little nice. Remember, uh, definitely one of the rule changes too that was uh, – implemented recently allows teams to alternate the color of their helmet uh, change. So pretty nice. I think I'll be excited to see that uh, for the Cleveland Browns, though, just uh, for a good look right there. But anyway, uh, for tonight's game, uh, definitely a lot of questions airing tonight right now as we look at, uh, like I said, Monday Night Football seems to be very special at home, winning 20 straight. That streak will be on the line tonight, see if they can move it to 21. But since the merger, when you talk about Steelers versus Browns, too, I mean, this all-time had the rivalry uh, since 1970, Steelers have been 66-29-1 and one versus the Browns. The longest win streak in that head-to-head -head matchup came, uh, which was 12 games, beginning on November 23rd, 2003, uh, through October 18th, 2009, when the Steelers def were defending their final uh, Super Bowl championship, as it currently stands right now at six. Uh, they would go on to lose to the Cleveland Browns. Remember, later on that season, on the Thursday night game in Cleveland, uh, and definitely a very hurtful game, which uh, hurt their playoff chances trying to defend their crown. But anyway, I mean, a lot of people seem to be thinking right now, I mean, same old Browns, um, not really uh, for me. But I think right now, when you look at the Browns right now, for what they've been able to do, I think they definitely made their mark. Uh, definitely a team, uh, a force to be reckoned with, especially defensively. Still running the game uh, phenomenally, though, right there. 
as we look at it. I mean, the Browns, for the most part, uh, as we look at it, uh, they are third in the league going to nice uh, contest. 206 yards off of 40 attempts, averaging 5.2 yards per attempt. And the disturbing thing about this game, too, Steelers are dead last to start off this game. 41 yards for only 10 carries. But again, mind you, in last week's game, when you look at this right here, I mean, you had about, for the most part, I mean, for total plays, I mean, 61 plays uh, total in the Steelers versus the Niners. And you break down the 31 pass attempts versus the 10 rushing attempts right there. You only had 10 opportunities for the ball to be ran. Now, granted, the ver uh, there's a lot of frustrating things with uh, Najee Harris, who has not been able to average uh, 4.4 yards per carry in his career so far, unfortunately. I mean, on a consistent basis, but, I mean, this guy right here, I mean, he's definitely got a lot to prove. Uh, he's been playing with a list Frank injury uh, last season with a steel plate in his shoe. I mean, the highest he's yards per attempt he's had was in his rookie season, but it took a while for him to warm up. When you look at it, too, remember, uh, Ben Rosper was one of the guys who pulled him aside and hooked him up with uh, Jerome Bettis to help uh, work out some chinks right there as we look at it. And you look at uh, Najee Harris, too, in his rookie season. His first 100-yard or more carry didn't come until week five when they're at home at Heinz Field, as it was called then, first the Broncos. Uh, that right there going to that uh, contest, the Steelers were one and three uh, that would turn into a four-game winning streak right there. And, I mean, throughout his uh, career, uh, Nigel Harris has only had four 100-yard rushing yards in games, four 100-yard rushing yard games, uh, with one coming only last year, which was late in the season, in uh, week uh, 16, no, week 17, excuse me, versus the Baltimore Ravens, where they won that game 16 to 13. S still alive uh, for the playoff hunt, but they definitely needed some help. Uh, they did not happen. But here we go. Uh, and that's all. I, I think for right now, you got a lot of question marks going on right now. Deshaun Watson, right now, too. He's another question mark going to tonight's game. Uh, can he return back to the form that saw him? I mean, when, when you look at him when he was with the Houston Texans, I mean, Deshaun Watson right now for his uh, career, uh, he is 32 and 28 uh, with 112 touchdowns of 42 interceptions with over 15,795 uh, yards. And, of course, he was a little bit rusty last year when he was uh, suspended for most of the season uh, due to his women allegations. He was able to come back late in the year. And the foul uh, six games of the season and where he uh, went, uh, for the most part, he went three and three to finish out the year. Uh, and that year uh, for him, I mean, when, when you look at it too, he uh, finished out the season uh, for his uh, starts and I mean, three and three, he had uh, seven touchdowns, five interceptions, 1,102 yards. Uh, yards per attempt was six and a half. But when you also look at two, uh, his uh, Deshaun Watson, his uh, last 300-yard uh, uh, game or more that he uh, threw for uh, in his uh, career was back on January 3rd, 2023. I mean, 2021, excuse me, versus the Tennessee Titans. That was in the loss. He threw for 365 yards, three touchdowns, one interception, not down to 341 yards for the game. So that, that was be a little bit of a question right there for Deshaun Watson. Can he shake off some of the rust for the – for, I mean, basically almost two years that he was away from the game, of course. And you look at it right there, I mean, all the stuff that he's been through and for the Browns going all in, surrendering multiple first-round picks to acquire this guy – uh, right now they're going all in, and to be honest, with you right now, I mean, this is a team right now. I mean, this division could be wide open for grabs. 
I mean, so far, when you look at the AFC North, aside from Deshaun Watson, look at right now, you got the Bengals right now on a two-game skid. Uh, Joe Burrow appears to re-injure his uh, calf. Uh, and you look at them, they're starting off 0-2. The Ravens right now are the top dogs in the division right now, going 2-0 as uh, they beat the Houston Texans and the Bengals uh, yesterday, which was a pretty huge win uh, right there. So they're 1-0 divisional play and the Bengals are 0-2 in the AFC North right now loses to the Browns in Cleveland and then yesterday in their home opener versus the Ravens but anyway let's go ahead and get some injury report roster news uh Steelers going to tonight's game they'll be without uh wide receiver Deontay Johnson uh hamstring Anthony McFarland knee they were both uh, as a team announced uh today that they are placed on injured reserve. Johnson is expecting this up to four weeks after he got injured in the first series, uh, first 49ers following a catch and run. His injury uh, for today uh, means that Gunnar Olszewski, who was inactive for 49ers, is expected to play the Steelers to face the Cleveland Browns on Monday night. He caught three of uh, six targets before leaving the game. Johnson did this. His absence will give more opportunities for receivers George Pickens, Al Robson, and Kelvin Austin. And don't forget, though, too, I mean, I think the Al Robson train right now might be proven to be an invaluable move right now going for the Steelers right now. Because remember, when the Steelers uh, trade uh, for Al Robson to uh, come to the Steelers, this happened back on uh, April 18th. The Basically, uh, the Steelers got Allen Robson, and also they uh, swapped uh, seventh-round uh, picks and where the Steelers uh, received the Rams' 251st overall pick, and they sent them their 234th overall pick in the seventh round to the L.A. Rams. So it was a swap pick in the seventh round right there. And uh, Allen Robson's contract, remember, it has been reworked. As Ian Rapport reported, Steelers will give Robinson a $3.83 million signing bonus and a base salary of $1.6 million in 2023, while the Rams will pay $10 million total. And uh, and then next year, Robinson will have a $10 million base, which is down for $15 million uh, per Rapport as we look at it. And uh, there you have it right there. I mean, I think this is going to be – I think this would be a very key acquisition for the Steelers right now, especially when you got guys like that hurt. Now, remember, you look at a guy like uh, Al Robinson right now who plays as their slot receiver right now. And uh, so far, when you look at that game last week, first San Francisco 49ers, he caught five of his eight targets for 64 yards. He led the team in reception yards last week. Uh, the only uh, receiver with a touchdown was, of course, tight end Pat Fryermuth, uh, who struggled that day mightily, only caught, who dropped three passes in that game, only catching one of four targets in that game. So I would definitely expect guys like, of course, like I said, I mean, you look at Allen Robinson, of course, as you mentioned, and, of course, as we look at it too, I mean, Jerry Dulek was pointing out, Gunnar Roszewski, I mean, who's being expected to play, uh, remember, uh, for the injury report, uh, George uh, Pickens, he's dealing with a hamstring. He was uh, limited in uh, practice. And then you also uh, got, for the rest of the Steelers' injuries right now, Deontay Johnson and Anthony McFarland uh, rolled out tonight's uh, game. As for the Cleveland Browns right now, you only got three guys uh, that were questionable. Uh, you had uh, wide receiver uh, Mari Cooper. And uh, their other starter, Juan Forjo, their free safety, who's dealing with a calf injury. And the other guy that was questionable was Siaki Aika, a defense tackle who dealt with a foot. He was questionable. But just to clear up the inactives for tonight's uh, game, Steelers will list four being inactive for tonight's uh, game. Uh, pretty much all their backups right now. Uh, their third string quarterback, Mason Rudolph. Quarterback, uh, Desmond King. Tackle, Dylan Cook and Dennis Fitzpatrick, while the Browns will be uh, without five players tonight. But so far, the guys I just mentioned right here uh, on the injury report, as we look at uh, Mari Cooper and Foreign Hill, they appear to be uh, playing in tonight's game. Uh, 
Also, too, some uh, also interesting uh, news right there. Steelers, they had at least uh, two players uh, fined from last week's game for unnecessary roughness. Talking about long snapper Christian Coots. Uh, at 1230 in the second quarter, uh, $5,222 in strong safety. Keanu O'Neal at seven minutes in the second quarter, $8,556. Uh, 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 both uh, fines in last week's game. Uh, so the Steelers are definitely, I think they want to like, uh, make sure to keep the penalties down, of course, as we uh, look at it. Uh, for the most part, if you look at the matchup wise, too, for the Steelers uh, versus Browns right now, I know it's only uh, one game, but you look at it right now, the way things are starting off. I mean, here's things you got to be uh, paying very attention to right now. I mean, you look at the offense uh, for the Cleveland Browns right now, they already got 350 yards compared to the Steelers, 239 yards. Uh, the start off this season right there. That is a big thing right there. Uh, and also, just like we mentioned, the ru running game right now, disappointingly dead last in the league, 10 rushes for 41 yards. Meanwhile, the Browns, no surprise here, four yards for 206 yards, uh, basically. And, uh, I mean, we're going to find out what's going to be uh, happening uh, tonight. But, uh, yeah, I, I think for right now, when you look at, like, what the Browns have been able to do, I mean, it's just their by work, how they continue to just uh, do things right now. Uh, you look at it right here. Of course, Nick Chubb, he is the bell cow for them right now. He's got 106 yards, who's got a majority of those uh, 206 yards right there, about about half right there. Uh but at the same time, too, also, like, in the uh, scrimmage, he, of course, uh, leads the team at 127 yards in total. But, I mean, you also got right here, too, uh, behind him, Deshaun Watson, who's still proving he could be a dual threat. He ran for five rushes for 45 yards right there, so over nine yards per attempt uh, last week versus Cincinnati uh, Bengals right there, too. And got, got some interesting guys right here, too. And then – you look at the defense of the Browns going to tonight's game. I mean, guys who could be like a real force. I mean, of course, you look at, of course, Miles Garrett. We already know about him. And everyone else right here, too. So it's definitely going to be an interesting uh, matchup uh, for the most part. I mean, and you also got Darius uh, Smith right there partnered up with uh, Miles Garrett for tonight's uh, contest. Very good tandem right there, each with four quarterback hits on this uh, contest. So definitely look for it to be possibly a long, uh, struggling night. We'll see. Uh, hopefully I'm proven wrong. But on the Steelers' uh, flip side right now, fortunately, thankfully for T.J. Watt. Remember T.J. Watt uh, last year uh, who missed quite a big uh, chunk of games uh, last year when you look at it. I mean, T.J. Watt, who last week after the first game – had a peck in, had peck tear, I believe it was. And you look at last season, uh, shortly after that opener win on the road in Cincinnati versus the Bengals, he would go on to miss uh, seven straight games. He was lost for over two months. He then returned until November 13th of that year, first New Orleans uh, Saints. But he was still able to uh, finish out the year two uh, with uh, three sacks, uh, five total uh, tackle or no, excuse me, five and a half sacks right there, 39 total tackles, and was able to still get 12 uh, quarterback hits in that amount of time. So he only played uh, 10 games right there, so missing seven altogether for him as a uh, former defensive player of the year is looking to keep things in order. But right now, too, TJ Watt, speaking of which, he will look to officially, uh, surpass James Harrison, who he is tied with for the all-time uh, franchise's sack record right now. Uh, him and Debo right now are tied at each eight and a half sacks. But for T.J. Watt, in 88 career games, he surpassed his brother J.J. Watt in 92 games and is the second fastest player to reach 80 sacks since 1982, uh, which Hall of Famer Reggie White uh, did it in 71 games. So a nice little milestone right there. Uh, tip the cap to uh, Reggie Boyd right there, 
course, I always remember him for my money. He'll always be a uh, Green Bay Packer, in my opinion, with the Ministry of Defense right there. And for any people who grew up watching him, too, of course, the Philadelphia Eagles right there with Buddy Ryan and, and company. But, yeah, definitely a long night today. Uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. And I'm not going to lie to you. I think a lot of people are looking at last week's game right now, a big in the care right now. Uh, I mean, this team go, heading into tonight's game, and I think there was a lot of encouragement. You look from the preseason right there. I mean, they were able to win, what was it, like a, a, a nice uh, winning streak so far in the preseason. But still, I mean, the Steelers, for the most part, I, I think they did everything well to prepare. I think the only red flags I had was in that in those seven-shot drills right there. I mean, in camp, I think that was about the only thing I had, like, a uh, concern with as far as for this uh, team. I mean, you look at, like, the, the – Seven shot drills for the most part, and were through like uh early part of August, like August 9th, what I had record. They were uh four and seven versus the defense right there. Defense winning a lot of those uh battles. But you also remember too, guess what? They also were once again three and oh in the preseason. And you looked at Kenny Pickett right there, he had a perfect QB rating, two touchdowns, uh zero interceptions right there. I mean, for the most part, I mean, just everything he did. I mean, just just when they uh, played against the Bucks, the Bills, and then the Falcons, and everything else. And I I think, you know, Mike Tomlin right there. I think he's got the right attitude. Uh, just keeping this team prepared, just trying to create a winning environment. I, I'm not going to be one of the guys that will question like why'd you like work these guys harder in the preseason. I'm not going to go there. I think he sent the right message, but I think it was definitely very an abysmal disappointment, to say the least, versus the San Francisco 49ers in their opening loss. That's just something to pay attention to, uh, regardless at the end of the day, no matter how you slice it. Now, can this team still make the playoffs? It's still up in the air right now. Uh, because at the end of the day, you look at a guy like uh, Kenny Pickett right now, I mean, it's just disappointing to see him with the turnovers right now this early, already two turnovers, and then already being sacked five times right now. And then the biggest question, too, right now, you still got uh, Broderick, uh, jo I mean, uh, yeah, Broderick Jones, who's still the backup behind uh, Moore right here in, on the Steelers' offensive line. And, I mean, Dan Moore right now, I think he commented and said that Broderick Jones seems like he's – He's more natural play at right tackle. Uh, Chooks Warmer, a core for he was in crushing protocol earlier in the week. So he's clear the play of the night. Uh, he's still slider at the right tackle. But I'll be interested to see how the season goes along right now because Brian Jones did struggle a little bit uh, throughout uh, camp and preseason. But I, I'm still willing to give this guy, you know, a lot of slack right now uh, for being their 14th overall pick out of Georgia right here. I still think he'd be something pretty special in time. A lot of rookies, uh, this will be their time right there when they get pushed around. But let's find out tonight. But that's be definitely huge uh, keys right there. And also, too, I mean, let's look at this team right now. I mean, with the Steelers right now. I mean, basically, through everything going on, I mean, you look at it right now. I mean, it was just interesting. I mean, when you look at, like, the opening game right there, too, First, the San Francisco 49ers, the snap counts right there that was uh, shared uh, on this uh, team right here. And basically for, like, the defense. And uh, you saw right there in the opening game versus the 49ers, which they uh, lost. Mika had uh, 68 of those uh, snaps he played. Uh, Patrick Pearson was uh, third, was tied for second on the team with uh, Levi Wallace with 67. And a lot of people were wondering about uh, Joey Porter Jr. in this game. So we uh, looked at it. But uh, right now, I mean, just be willing to be interested to see. I mean, will Joey Porter, uh, like, when will he come out in time? When will he start to, like, get going? He played seven snaps uh, last week. And, and, of course, right there, too, I mean, uh, Cam Hayward's snaps were lower due to his uh, torn – 
his growing tear, basically. Uh, so he played only 14 in that game. But we'll see what happens right now uh, tonight. This will be an issue right here. Got a lot of question marks right now, especially on the run defense right now. I mean, you look at, like, their inside linebacker right now, Cole Holcomb right now, who pretty much, like, was one of the guys who definitely got dominated in that game. He only had five total tackles, no tackles for loss. And then you also look at two – I mean, their other inside linebacker, it landed in uh, Roberts, who I felt like had a decent game last week. He stood out a little bit more. He had eight total tackles but, and only had two tackles for loss. That's going to be the big thing uh, for tonight's game. Can they stop and control the run? So let's go ahead and get right into it before we uh, kick things off and get ready for tonight's game. Key number one, controlling and stopping the run, as I just mentioned. Nick Chubb uh, averaged 5.9 yards uh, last week's opener. So you have to start arguing with the best running back in football. Or is that the guy who ran all over the extra, extra stadium grass last week? Deshaun Watson hasn't had a 300-yard passing game, as we mentioned earlier in the podcast, since returning uh, from suspension last year with six games left. But he did run five times, 45 yards week one. Third in the league right now uh, with their running while the Steelers are dead last. That is be key number one. You have to have those guys right there. I'm going to look for guys right now. I'll be paying attention to in tonight's game. Uh, Landon Roberts, can he follow up on our big game uh, going right here uh, in tonight's uh, contest? I mean, uh, for the most part, I mean, Landon Roberts, who uh, comes into tonight's uh, game right now in his uh, late 20s at 29 years old. And then, of course, right now, I mean, along with Cole uh, Holcomb right there, too, can can those guys, like, step up and do a job to help stop, like, guys like uh, Nick Chubb and try and contain uh, Deshaun uh, Watson right there? Now, remember, too, when the Steelers did face the 49er, I mean, the Cleveland Browns last year in the season finale uh, versus them, and which they did miss out in the playoffs, but they did beat the Browns to finish out the season. Don't forget, in that contest right there, you saw the Steelers uh, in that game. They were able to get after Deshaun Watson in that uh, game where he got sacked seven times for 57 yards. Uh, they were also forced uh, turnovers in that game. Uh, two interceptions right there. So that'd be a dual threat right there. Nick Chubb and Deshaun Watson controlling stop the run. And Najee Harris, please get going along with uh, Jalen Warren. But for the most part, Najee Harris is credit. Give him credit, though. He still averaged over five yards in last week's opener. Not enough carries, but he still had 31 yards off of six carries, 5.2 yards per attempt to be exact. Uh, which be leading to key number two. How are you going to be able to control and stop the run right there? And now that the pass rush, too, uh, on the offensive side right now. They're going to be in uh, line for a big pass rush right here. Uh, Steelers left tackle Dan Moore Jr. versus Browns, Miles Garrett. Uh, Cleveland's star is just in his bag, as they say, and now comes Pittsburgh looking to wreck the game against Kane Pickett and the Steelers, as he did last week versus Bengals. Now, according to the next-gen stat, he had an average get-off time of 0.58 seconds, under a minute. Uh, that's a metric that usually measures how quickly a defender crosses the line of scrimmage. And ESPN analytics writer Seth Wader pointed out that number from Garrett tied the best mark in the game from last year, which was also posted by him. So that's going to be uh, key number two right there. Uh, key number three I'm going to go with, too. Uh, points off turnovers right there. Remember, the Steelers surrendered uh, four turnovers that led the two field goals versus the San Francisco 49ers in that game right there. You got to be careful right there. I think they gave up around 36 points off of turnovers last year. That's going to be another key right there, too, because you have to keep the ball under control right there. As you look at the Cleveland Browns right there going today's uh, game right there, you look at what they've been doing so far. I mean, they each team has got two takeaways. Steelers, for the most part, and the Browns are both in the negative right now. Steelers are minus one, while the Browns are minus two in total ratio. But you got to be able to keep that out of control. From definitely going up against the pass rush against Miles Garrett and company as is Darius Smith. And last key right now, fix the glitches. Mike Thomas' group has done well recently when responding to blows, going 4-0 the next game. 
last four times they lost by more than 20 points all since the 2021 season. And that, my friends, is going to do it, ladies and gentlemen, for this edition here of Show Blitz, presented by the Metal Steel Podcast. Me, Charles Prize Richie. You can follow me on my social media. You can follow me on Twitter at Metal Steel CGR and on Instagram at Metal Steel Nation. Let's go ahead and see if they uh, get this win tonight. Uh, keep things going. Not only that, uh, can they extend the win streak to 21 uh, games in 31 years and counting? We'll find that find out. 30 years in line at home Monday Night Football. As always, leave it. Don't be trolling. Be rolling. Here we go, sir. Here we go. I got it. You know, this has been our story all year, hasn't it, man? 60 minutes. It's never going to be pretty. Throw style points out the window, but these guys will fight to the end. And I take my hat off to you, and I congratulate every last one of you. Thank you for watching the Mad Steel Podcast with your host, Charles Pratt Richie, here on YouTube. Please make sure to hit that subscribe button. And for all the latest Mad Steel Podcasts episodes, feel free to download them on Mixcloud, Anchor.fm, and SoundCloud wherever you get your podcasts.